The only certainty we have in life is death. Some people get to live to a ripe old age, while some don't even get a chance. I guess death comes in its own time. I had a little sister who died a few days after she was born, and this was back in the 80s. And I suppose like then, mental health issues are not very widely discussed. Being Chinese, we tend to just lock it up in a box and never look at it again. We hardly talked about my sister who died. A lot of people think that, you know, when we give birth to babies, the first time you hold your daughter in your arms and you feel this sudden flash of magical lights and feelings. But when my daughter was born, she didn't immediately cry. And I was worried. You expect the baby to be wailing. And I remember asking if everything was okay. And then when I heard her cry, it was a sense of relief. It was actually something that I didn't think about until recently when I did a photo shoot for one of the families who had a baby after the other baby has died. And the baby was fussing and she was crying at one point. When I was going through the photos, I realised the significance of a crying photo. I have been a freelance photographer for 15 years. I was in my early 20s when I first picked up a camera and then I realised it was something that maybe you know, I had a natural eye for. One of the fears or most harrowing experience that an expectant mum can go through is having a stillborn baby. While most of us think that stillbirths are not very common, they actually happen a lot more than we know and that's because most people don't talk about it. Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep is a charity organisation that was started in the US. It is a group of volunteer photographers, professional photographers, who help parents photograph their babies who have died or are dying at birth. I think I was the solo photographer from Singapore or in Asia for a long time, very many years. I joined the organisation in 2008 a few months later, I received my first phone call to photograph a pair of premature twins. One of them was not thriving, so the parents had to make the unfortunate decision to let one go. You know, I photographed both babies from every possible angle, and until the father who broke down and then said enough and you know, wanted me to leave. I had all these paperwork for the parents to sign. And then I realised that it was such horrible timing. I didn't realise that I was depressed, I just knew I was very sad. And then suddenly I realised that I did just witness a baby dying. I still do get upset, even though I've done this for 13 years now. Hi. One thing I learned about the grieving process, that most of us are mistaken. Most people tend to pour out their emotions to the person who is actually experiencing the trauma. What I've learned from the parents is they have told me that they actually don't have the bandwidth to deal with the emotions of other people. So therefore, they really like that I'm actually supporting them and I'm not awkward or weirded out by a dead baby. I actually had a father once ask me, you know, you're not scared of, of this. After the session, parents have always expressed that they really appreciate that I was there with them during one of the worst moments of their lives. For some reason, even me just photographing them has given them a lot of support. Society has long conditioned us to celebrate a life well lived when an adult dies, but we hush a baby's death. For some, it carries the stigma of shame and guilt. But a life, any life, deserves to be celebrated, no matter how long or short it is. When I first joined the organisation and I shared it with a friend of mine, she asked why, <laughs> you know, why I would do something like this and why I would do it to myself. Most people think that what I do is macabre. They don't understand the drive, the reasoning behind it. Even my parents don't really acknowledge that I do that. If anything, that the last couple of years have taught us that people are starting to evolve and become more open-minded in talking about issues that may be uncomfortable. 
So there is a slightly wider acceptance of this work. It's a great thing that people are starting to recognise the importance of you know, remembering a child, a baby, even though the baby did not exist for a very long time on Earth. In fact, one of the recent families I photographed, they had another baby after that, but the mum usually tells people that she has two kids and one has died. The parents, some of them still keep in touch with me. It's important for me also that they don't only remember me as the photographer that photographed the baby who has died. So I usually offer to take a family photo shoot for them when they're in a much better space. I think the first time it happened where one of the families called or texted me to let me know that they're pregnant again, I actually broke down and I couldn't stop crying all day because being an outsider and having watched them at one of the most difficult moments in their life, and seeing how they have come out of it on the other end. I think with more families that I meet, I have more confidence to say they are strong enough and they will pull through it. It gives them some hope. I'm not a religious person, but I do believe in the concept of a higher being. But there are moments where I actually question who does this? <laughs> who, who does this to people? And I, I can never figure out why. A friend of mine gave my daughter a book about death. And the lesson I got out of death, or why terrible things happen to us, is that we will never be able to fully understand happiness if we don't experience sadness. And as terrible as that sounds, I think that's pretty much what life is, right? Through that, that I realised that, okay, like, you know, death, it is part of life. <laughs>